Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the Everton News Daily. Uh, Armando Brogia will get his first action tonight for the Everton under 21s as they play against Wofford in the Premier League Cup. That game is literally kicking off right now if you are watching at 7 o'clock. Uh, Nathan Patterson and Jake O'Brien also feature in that game. And obviously, Brogia is a player we've been waiting for since deadline day, haven't we, to be to be back fit. Um, Sean Dice did say in the press conference on Saturday that he will play and it will be part of a games programme. So obviously we're not sure how many more games he will play in. If you go by when uh, Nathan Patterson came back and when uh, Jared Branthwaite came back, Jared Branthwaite played in a couple of games before going into the first team. Nathan Patterson... Um, <laughs> Has still not played to the first team um, and features tonight. So his game program's been a little bit longer, although he hasn't played any games in between. But obviously they're trying to keep Nathan Patterson ticking over. Uh, you know, I think Nathan Patterson should have gone on the pitch on Saturday. It would have helped Everton. But for Brozier, it's a major step. And for Jake O'Brien, who's been very unlucky this season, obviously not really featuring it. Well, not featuring in the Premier League. And obviously he's featuring in the Carabao Cup. It's... It's good for them, but for Armando Brogia, obviously, it's a major step. And a lot of Everton fans are desperate to see him, obviously, come into the first team along with Chimiti to uh, add some much-needed uh, goals, essentially goals, because we are completely missing them. So, really important night for him, and uh, hopefully he does well. As long as he listen, as long as he gets an hour under his belt and doesn't get injured, then... Ev that's that's all we want really everything else is a bonus so good luck to the team tonight uh also today the uh, dreaded vote of confidence seems like it's been issued to the manager as well to sean dyche alan myers has reported that everton have no plans to get rid of sean dyche obviously this is after a weekend where fans made their feelings known at the end of the nil nil draw against Brentford on Saturday. There was uh, booze ringing around the ground after Everton were able to uh, break down a 10 men Brentford side that normally ship goals for fun away from home. Uh, very, very disappointing performance, and uh, Everton have no plans, or the current owners have no plans, which I think is more appropriate, isn't it? I think. A lot of people believe that when new owners take the helm of, of Everton, that um, one of the first things they will look to do is bring in um, new management. There's even rumours out there to saying that they're already speaking to new managers, but they are obviously just rumours at this point. But um, the Freakins have to get everything signed off and done. And, you know, at the moment, that's saying the first couple of weeks in December. So we're probably about maybe two, three weeks away from that date. Um, and it's just tough, isn't it? It's just tough. It's not seeing the team win, seeing the performances that we're putting in, knowing that we've got big games coming up. Obviously, Manchester United at the on Sunday, then Wolves on the Wednesday, which is going to be a huge game, and then the Mayside Derby on the Saturday. Huge, huge games coming up, and they come thick and fast in December. And a lot of fans want change. Some don't, obviously. Some feel like Sean Dyche will get us over the line and as long as he does, nothing else really matters as we go towards the new stadium at the end of the season, but we'll we'll have to wait and see. Uh, talking to Sean Dyche, obviously he spoke after the game on Saturday in the 0-0 draw with Brentford. This is his feelings on the performance. Um, I thought first I we played well and I, uh, I thought we did better against 11. Um, the dynamic change with 10, you're playing against a block defence, which is always difficult and I thought they did well at that. Um, and we couldn't find the moments, the key moments, lots of efforts, lots of lots of shots and stuff, but not not really killer moments, you know. And I think it's been something I've talked about endlessly since I've been at the club and before I've been at the club. It's been a reality for a long time here, you know, and, and developing people who score goals is the toughest challenge as a manager. So if you can't develop individuals, you want to develop a team that can score goals. The challenge we've had this season is quite obvious to everyone. We were conceding far too many and we had to change that. So we've changed that, but now you've got to stay effective in the offensive side. So we're scoring a bit e not easier, but f more freely at the beginning of the season, but we're conceding too many. So that's been the challenge, quite obviously. Overall today, I'm disappointed in the result, quite obviously. Credit to them for defending so well, second half, you know, because they've, they've been struggling this season to keep clean sheets. Um, you know, and we've got to find killer moments more often than not. There you go. Uh, obviously, disappointing. Um, but the manager feels like he's, uh, you know, doing everything he can. Uh, also, the manager spoke about 
not being able to open up Brentford in that second half, obviously them down to 10 men, probably made it harder for Everton because Everton don't like having the ball. Is his thoughts on that. We had more of the ball at West Ham, um, We had, which in a way game is, is indifferent for us. You know, it's not always the case. We had more of the ball today. When you've got more of the ball, it's how quick your tempo is, how quickly you can affect the opposition. You know, you know, can you find the key moments? Usually, clever players in the front third find the key moments. If you can't find that, can you cross it, can you head it and all them basics? I think Beto has a big chance. I think another one's a good block, to be fair, from them. I think Illy has a chance on the back stick. Dwight has a couple of breakaway moments. They're all things that count in a football match, you know, and if they go in, it changes it. But today, I, I feel, because I don't want to change my rules, we've had less chances, but more effective chances and not taken them. So they've had lots of chances, but I didn't think there was too many effective, apart from the ones I've just mentioned. There weren't too many where you went, oh, that's a golden chance. So that's, that, you know, that's something that we have done recently, not taken chances, whereas today I don't think we found them true chances. But I must say, I thought, I thought the first half, I thought we were very good. I thought we, we dominated most of it. They're a team that do come out of the blocks quick, everyone knows that. They're searching a way to try and change it themselves. And I thought the first half was a really decent performance. Second half, it was flat and it just lost that edge and that moment of quality that is so important. Then the team get nervous, the stadium gets nervous, which we've experienced before. And I spoke to the players about the growth of them as well. That's the demand here. I know it, they know it. And it's handling that and then move, still playing with the freedom to go and open teams up. And it was difficult today. Obviously... Obviously, the manager's disappointed, isn't he? He's disappointed that we don't, we haven't won um, at the weekend. And yeah, they'll say it's uh, one defeat in April for us fans. It's obviously only two wins all season. And the manager did speak about the fans' feelings, uh, which uh, he will have heard during the game and at the end of the game. Boys have been concerned ever since I walked in the door. They were concerned before I walked in the door. They were concerned before that. And they've been concerned when I've been here. I've been talking endlessly about us trying to change the story. We haven't done that. We've had spells when we have done it, and then we've dropped away. And even this spell, you know, we was it one loss in eight, but it doesn't mean anything because we're not winning. And I don't, I don't shy away from that. You want to win, you know. I want to play winning football, and we're not winning as many as we should be winning, in my opinion. So the work just continues. How many different ways? How many different ways can we affect it? games? How many different players can we use? How many different styles can we use? You know, this season we're trying to affect it with the ball and we're opening up and then we conceded too many goals. So then we have to tighten up. Then we go long and we're not as effective as we like. Then we play and we played a lot today, but we didn't really be effective. So it's searching. That's what managers do. We search for the right moments that can win your games and make you more effective. Whose is to find that? Of course it's mine. That's what managers do. I'm well aware of that. You know, mine, my staffs, the, the players, we're all combining with responsibility, but it's mine and never, and I have no problem with that. No issue. There you go. As I said before, obviously fans very unhappy after the game on Saturday. And yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough month coming up. Uh, obviously the fans will stick with the team and uh, we'll have to just wait and see what happens. But there you go. Don't forget, Everton under 20 is kicking off. Uh, well, he will have kicked off about about 10 minutes ago now, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, let's see how Brozier gets on. We'll let you know all about it tomorrow on the Everton News Daily. Thanks for watching. See you later.